Akari, we'll return to you in the Kano Network Center. A moment ago, uh, the Honorable Minister of Finance uh, was back on the screen, and we understand the connection is much clearer. So, uh, Honorable Minister, uh, let's uh, continue to uh, listen to uh, your explanation as to uh, what the uh, Finance Act 2020 seeks to achieve in the main. And in responding to that, you may also wish to speak on this. There is no part of a legislation uh, that is not useful. But from the government's point of view, what are the potential game changers in terms of strengthening the economy against whatever impact there might be of coronavirus, which is still lingering, and indeed other uncertainties that lie out there in the external environment and even the domestic environment? Well, thank you very much. Apologies, the safety is uh, poor and actually went off. I was saying that the Finance Act is uh, is uh, designed with five thematic areas in mind. One is enacting counter-cyclical measures, and in that regard, we created a legal framework that is helping us to respond adequately to the coronavirus uh, crisis. Also, it allows us to to permit uh, uh, companies and individuals that have donated towards the pandemic to recover the donation in the form of tax relief. We also have uh, designed the bill with a tax and fiscal responsibility view. That is, we had to amend a couple of um, fiscal legislations to enhance our implementation of tax reforms. And also, we have then been able to make provisions to amend the Fiscal Responsibility Act, to amend the Procurement Act, to also enhance the ease of doing business so that the, the businesses in the, in the country will have tax relief to enable them plow back uh, the taxes that they will have paid into their businesses to grow and also to employ people. We have been able to also make a provision to allow for fiscal relief for mass transit. This is very important. We were looking for how to provide uh, fiscal stimulus to Nigerians, a stimulus package that will uh, impact a large proportion of people. If you look at what is happening now, we have inflation running um, on an incremental basis on a month-to-month -month basis. Within that inflation, if you decouple it, the largest component uh, contributor to inflation is transport is 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 uh, food inflation, and what drives food inflation? The largest component of it is transport. So we were looking at how do we uh, make a provision that enables the reduction in the cost of transportation, which will have the consequences of reducing food inflation and providing relief to every Nigeria. So we had to take this very difficult decision about uh, reducing the levies in the, within the transport sector. We're very much aware that this reduction will affect the investors in the transport sector, but this is a fiscal stimulus. That is what government does when you have a crisis to provide relief to the larger pro uh, proportion of the population. We have met uh, under the chairmanship of His Excellency, the Vice President, with the investors within the sector. And we're supposed to have follow-up meetings to look at how we can mitigate the impact of this policy decision, this fiscal policy decision on their businesses, for example, we, we were looking at how government, at least at the federal level, can make a commitment in line with its Buy Nigeria policy to buy Made in Nigeria vehicles so that there is offtake of these vehicles that is produced by these investors within the sector. And also to remind Nigerians that our assessment is the total number of vehicles that is uh, 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 brought into or required to be brought into Nigeria Every, every year is about 750,000. The combined capacity today of the uh, assembly, uh, 14 assembly plants in Nigeria is about 50,000 vehicles in a year. So there's a wide gap. And it means also that government can actually uptake these vehicles. We will also be encouraging the states and the local governments to buy this made in Nigeria vehicles. We feel if we do that, the concerns of the industry should have been adequately addressed but then again, we will be engaging them to find how we can provide relief. But our target 
is not to harm the industry, no. It is to provide the greatest possible relief to taxpayers, to Nigerians, to ease the difficulties that is caused by transport uh, 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 that has the consequences on not only food, but on several aspects of the day-to-day -day lives of, uh, of, of Nigerians. All right, indeed. Uh, let's remain with you, uh, Honorable Minister. Actually, the five thematic areas that you have mentioned uh, have a wide coverage of concerns, uh, which, if, of course, uh, uh, adequately implemented, will actually turn the economy around and, of course, uh, ensure that uh, all you have stated are going to be achieved within the next uh, uh, one year. But I want to ask this question because uh, when it comes to implementation, we usually have uh, hiccups here and there. Well, of course, going by what has happened in the past. Now, what are the assurances that uh, there are strategies being put in place to ensure that these thematic areas you've mentioned are going to be adequately implemented to ensure result-oriented budget implementation 2021? So the, the um, revenue collection authorities, the FRS, the customs and other revenue collecting agencies are improving on their efficiency. And the proof of this improvement is in the performance of the uh, this revenue collecting agencies, even in the most difficult times we have ever seen in our country. The IRS, FRS, for example, reports a revenue performance of about 98%. The efficiency of the tax collection collecting agencies has improved. A number of their processes are automated, removing manual processes that causes difficulties for people. We've also learned from the experience of the implementation of the 2019 uh, um, Finance Act, where VAT is incre was increased and uh, the structures to implement the increase in the VAT was not put in place before the Act was passed into law. So there. There's improvement which is on an incremental basis that has been going on. We're confident that these authorities that have this responsibility to implement the provisions of this act are poised and ready to uh, hit the ground running and do the implementation because the bill was designed together with them. It's not just by the Ministry of Finance. It's a broad-based uh, group of stakeholders, including professionals, tax practitioners, the, we, we got uh, the five big firms in the country supporting us. We got industry. We got different stakeholders, including some civil society and several ministries, departments, and agencies that have key roles to play in designing the bill. So it's not, it's not uh, a bill that is designed by a few people in the Ministry of Finance. It went through a large number of broad-based consultations. We had large meetings and got inputs and had to make adjustments back and forth before we submitted to the National Assembly. And then at the National Assembly, they also had their public hearing. Of course, when you submit a bill from the executive, when it comes out there, uh, it comes out uh, with some changes, not exactly what goes in comes out. But we're happy with the outcome all the same. Well, just uh, to uh, seek further explanation, what are the significant uh, changes by way of amendment that the Finance Act 2020 has made to one, the Fiscal Responsibility Act, and two, the Public Procurement Act? Well, in terms of the uh, Fiscal Responsibility Act, the provision of the act that uh, limits the deficit to GDP uh, of the country to 3% was contemplated to be adjusted. But we now agreed that since the act has a provision that says that in terms of emergency, that the government can exceed that deficit limit um, and revert back when things are back to normal. So we didn't have to make those adjustments, but we now have introduced adjustments that limits the expenditure of the government-owned enterprises to a minimum of 50%, which means they can utilize the, uh, the revenues that they generate to a minimum of 50%. And therefore, it means we're expecting revenues of, uh, to, to be uh, remitted to the Federation of the other 50%. What we found over time is 
agencies post expenditure as much as 95% of their revenue. In some cases, 100% and nothing comes to the treasury. So by doing that, we're expecting a significant increase in revenue from the government-owned enterprises. We also have put in place uh, a, a, a more stringent monitoring mechanism to track the performance of these government-owned enterprises, this revenue generating agents on the procurement act what we sought to do was to reform the act to enable us uh, um, get better efficiency within the procurement process the procurement process is quite lengthy and complex and what we've done is to be able to reduce the time that is required for pro procurement to be to be completed that will enhance the performance of the budget enabling the uh, ministries, departments, and agencies to implement their their, their budgets faster, and uh, and uh, of course it will be better. But apart from that, uh, if you will permit me, there are a number of key provisions of the Finance Act that I would like to speak to. First of all, is the provision that we made to allow for compensation of uh, to allow relief on compensation for loss of office after 10 million so if you retire from office and you have your gratuity the first 10 million of that gratuity is not going to suffer from capital gains tax only if it is over 10 million that you will be taxed also donations that have been made whether it is in cash or kind to government whether at federal or state levels for the pandemic for the coronavirus pandemic or for any natural disaster from now on shall be tax deductible subject to a maximum of 10% of the access profit of the of the taxpayer thirdly we have also made a provision to reduce the minimum tax threshold that is payable by uh, companies by as much as 50% moving this threshold from 0.5% to 0.25% of gross turnover of franked investment income for companies in the year of uh, returns this is for a two-year period so it's quite specific so it's not uh, perpetual we also have made a very significant exemption for taxpayers that earn the minimum wage so if your minimum if your wage is thirty thousand naira in the past you pay personal income tax now you have relief you are not uh, going to be suffering any uh, personal income tax. We also had made further exemptions to micro, small, medium enterprises to from payment of the tertiary education tax. Recall that in the 2019 Finance Act, we made provisions for the smallest businesses of tax relief uh, of zero, zero taxes so that they, if your turnover is 25 million and below, you're not paying any taxes. But we, uh, but you still were to pay your education tax, which is 2%. So that education tax is also pulled away. This is to enhance the growth and the performance of the small businesses, which are the larger proportion of enterprises in Nigeria and the largest employers of labor. Third, uh, the next item is um, for me is to mention that we also have uh, place on tax, tax exempt uh, commercial airline tickets uh, in Nigeria are uh, exempted from VAT. Right now, even before this bill, when you're buying an international uh, ticket, you are not charged VAT. So now when you buy a local ticket, you will also uh, not be charged VAT. This is helping taxpayers, but it's also reducing the cost of tickets, enhancing the turnover of the airlines and, and uh, helping to grow their business to, 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 to stabilize more. There are some provisions also in that, under the Finance Act that we need in terms of primary agricultural pro products that we sought to refine in this to, to make it more specific to primary agricultural products that will be entitled to uh, tax holidays, that's Pioneer uh, Tax Holiday, for an initial period of four years with a possibility of a two-year renewal subject to the assessment of the performance that the government will, will conduct. There are a lot of provisions within the Finance Act. 
One of them that is, appears to be contentious is the import duty reduction on tractors from 35% to 5% on mass transit vehicles or transport of, uh, 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 of 10 persons from 35% to, to 10 percent and then also on cars from uh, 35 percent to to five percent so this is done like i said earlier on to provide relief in terms of transport to nigerians to taxpayers to reduce the cost of uh, transportation that has a large impact in terms of input into inflation this would have the impact of reducing the cost of food. It will have the impact of reducing the cost of food, which is very critical to ensure uh, food security for, for Nigerians. All right, Honorable Minister, thank you very much indeed for that uh, comprehensive analysis of the uh, uh, Finance Act 2020 that you have just uh, done. And, uh